All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today you join me as I go to pick up a VW Beetle convertible that I bought for just £700. And I'm pretty sure there's guaranteed profit in this. I had a quick look on Autotrader this morning. The cheapest one I could see was £800, so it should leave me with a healthy margin. I haven't seen it yet, but I've bought a batch of cars from a local main dealer, and this is one of them. It's a 57 Reg, so a late 2007, and it's done 53,000 miles. So, nice mileage, really. And the biggest selling point is that it's finished in Old English White, which is a really popular colour for these old Beetle convertibles. And that is all I know. I'm not a huge fan of the new Beetle, personally. Or the old one, in fact. The Mark III was quite good, but the first one and two I've never been a big fan of. But the convertible models always seem to sell well. In fact, I was watching The Chase the other night, if you're not from the UK, it's a popular game show, and the host, Bradley Walsh, asked the contestant what she's going to do with her money when she wins, or if she wins. And she said, oh, I really want a Beetle convertible. They are popular, strangely. I'm guessing because it hasn't done many miles, it's probably just driven to the supermarket a couple of times a week, and to the hairdressers a couple of times a month. It was probably owned by somebody called Julie, or Sharon. I'm also betting that the radio station's set to Smooth FM, and I guarantee there's some sort of daisy or tulip in the vase. And I would have thought a couple of the wheels I want refurbishing, so I'll have to book that in with Prestige. But apart from that, I'm hoping it's a clean car. With 53,000 miles on the clock, it can't not be, can it? Anyway, time will tell. Let's go and have a look, shall we? Well, we're here. That actually looks all... Oh, hang on a minute. Right, it's a 53 Reg. I was told it was a 57. What's going on here then? I was told it was a 57 Reg done 53,000 miles. Unless I've got it the wrong way around and it's actually a 53 done 57. Right, we're not exactly off to a flying start, are we? That looks like a new Reg plate as well, so I'm guessing it's had a private plate. It is Old English white though, whatever the colour's called, so it looks okay. Bodywork's not great, there are a few scrapes on it. And the wheels look ropey. Oh, look at the state of the roof. I feel sick, actually. This isn't good at all, is it? Right, well, let me do a vehicle history check. Let's see what we can find out about it. As always, I'm going to use a company called Car Vertical. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg, and it'll tell you everything you need to know about the vehicle. If you click the link below and use the promo code HIGHPEAK, you'll get 10% off each and every check that you do. It's really important that you do a check like this before you buy a vehicle so you don't end up with a complete lemon like me. Right, Yankee Delta 53 NJF. My colleague's initials. This will tell us whether it's been stolen, involved in any accidents, has outstanding finance on it. It'll also tell us how many previous owners it's had, all that sort of stuff. It's just checking databases in dozens of countries here as we speak. It only takes a couple of minutes and it only costs the same as a couple of drinks in the pub, so it's definitely worth doing. Right, and the report is now ready. So, view report. So the mileage is genuine, it's never been stolen, never been involved in any accidents, and there's no outstanding finance on it. So that's all good. Doesn't help the fact that I've got this the wrong way around there with the mileage and the age, does it? But let's see if there's any MOT on it. Its last MOT was done in February this year, and it had quite a number of advisors. Oil leak, but not excessive. Offside front suspension arm, pin or bush worn. Near side front brake pipe corroded or covered in grease, there we go. Offside rear brake pipe corroded, covered in grease. Near side front suspension arm or bush, pin or bush worn. Near side rear brake pipe corroded. Right, so it needs new brake pipes, suspension arms, and the oil leak fixing. And by the looks of it, a new roof, some paintwork, some new wheel refurbs. This is one of those cars that straight away I can tell you isn't worth fixing. Ah, so it has had a private plate. The previous plate changed just recently, actually, and it had a bug plate on it, and now it's gone back to its original number. I don't know why they have bug plates on. I know that's it's hardly original, is it? It's not funny or original. So its last MOT, it had done 56,000 miles, and it does about 1,000 miles a year. This is exactly what I've done here. I've either been told the wrong information, or I've got the wrong information in my head. So it's a 53 Reg with 57,000 miles on, not the other way around. Oh well, you can't win them all, can you? Let's go and have a look then. Well, straight away I'm gutted that this is four years older than I thought it was. On the bright side we've got two keys. Do they both work? Yeah, both the keys work. It's 
quite a scruffy car this. We've got bodywork issues here, black appeal. We've got a handcook on the back which doesn't look too old, but the wheel is in a bit of a state. We need new centre caps. The biggest concern really is this roof. Look at the state of that. I mean it's mossier than my shed roof. And it looks worn. I think even with a good jet wash, this is going to be too far gone really. I think it needs to be replaced. These usually rust quite badly around the sills and stuff. We've got a damaged mirror surround here. This is an absolute bucket. We've got perished rubbers. This has spent all of its life parked under a tree, I think. It's covered in mould, moss. Another hangook on the front and another damaged wheel with a missing wheel centre. It's good clean. More body damage at the front there. This is what drew me to think that the plates were new because they look suspiciously clean and the rest of the car looks very dirty. Need a new bonnet badge, they always seem to wear. It's a very grubby car this. Another scuff. Another dirty wheel there which could clean up but still needs refurbishing. How old are these tyres? Let's have a look for a date stamp. 22nd week of 19. They're not too old then, are they? And if she's only done, I'll say she, I'm guessing it's a she, if she's only done a couple of thousand miles a year, those tyres will have only done 6,000 miles. More moss here. Some damage to the windscreen there. Hmm, Gilbert Lawton. So it's come from Manchester then, this. Although the plate's a Yorkshire plate, isn't it? Anyway. This desperately needs a good clean, this, but like I say, I think it's too far gone. I think we'll give it a good clean up anyway and see how it looks. Have we got a matching Hancock? Yeah, okay, so we've got matching Hancock tyres. This again was the 27th week of 19, so they're not too bad. Very flat paintwork, this looks really sorry for itself. More damage there. That's had a rear bumper respray, that, because you can tell. If you look around the, the lights here, you can see where it starts to flake. In fact, and that part as well. This had quite a lot of paint, this, you know. Yeah. It's got all the telltale signs this of being an unloved car. Does the boot open? No. No, it does not. Okay, right. Let's have a look inside. Now, judging by the state of the roof, the inside is going to stink. Terrific. Doesn't work. Right, let's drop the windows then. Oh, <laughs> just got a whiff of the interior. Oh, smells like an old shower. This is very, very grotty. We've got a thick mould here, mildew. Rear seat belts are open for some reason. Mouldy rear seat belts, mouldy rear seats. We've got stains here. Shouldn't even be touching that. I don't know what, what has caused those stains. Very grubby looking mats. More mould on the dash there. Something missing there. This is grim, this. How, ugh, how unpleasant. Put these windows up, it's cold. Oh, we've got heated seats, look at that. Let's put these things back up. Oh, right. Right, we've got a problem here because the windows don't seem to go up. That's not a good sign, is it? And it's cold and blowy and I just want some warmth. So, ah, right, so it's done 57,000 miles, there we go. I don't know whose fault that is. So 53 done 57, and we've got a service light on. And none of the windows work. Oh, from any of the buttons, terrific. What an absolute lemon. Oh well, right, so, what can I tell you about it? Heated seats, mm, no air conditioning. 
Oh, let's check the radio. Moment of truth, what do you think? Radio one, two, or am I right with smooth? Oh yes, look at that. What a wonderful world, I don't show your optimism today. Right, I don't know what that is. We could use it as a coaster, couldn't we? What a turd. There is nothing nice about this car. That looks like a handle for the... Oh yeah, it's missing. Lovely. That build quality. But lock and wheel nut. This one's got the detachable gear gator there. Lovely. Oh, look at that. Six disc changer. That doesn't seem to work for some reason. Uh, right, so, yes, so it had a private plate, it's a 1.6 petrol, with 101 horsepower, 18 years old. Right. That's the MO2 that we saw. Right, Halfords, mm, okay. Halfords are usually over the top with things like this. the Halfords one there. Ah, oh, right, so it failed. Yep, they've been done. Headlamp fault, faulty, that's been fixed. Driver's door did not open from the outside. Adjusted the cable. The door's open now, but not always on the first try. You'd have just replaced that, surely. Surely. Got a new horn. New CV boots. And then we've got a load of old history here. I shouldn't show you that. It's got the owner's name and address on it. Try and hide that then. So it's had, yeah, new tyres, all that sort of stuff, right. Lots of warning lights over the years. Let's have a look under the mouldy bonnet. Why don't my windows go up? This is going to be a cold test drive, isn't it? There was no resistance then. Ah, strut works. Yeah, this has been parked under a tree for years, this. Hmm. It's 1.6, that's probably better news than the 2 litre, because the 2 litre is quite thirsty. People are always put off by that oil doesn't look too bad actually there we go that's my mechanicing done fairly new battery I would say sticker there from VW oh, that's in Spanish were these made in Mexico I've got a feeling these were made in Mexico anyway that's irrelevant right well, I've seen enough there. That oil filter doesn't actually look too old. That's a Crossland filter. I think they sell those at Euro. That doesn't look too old, so it might have had a fairly recent service. Somebody's greased up the bonnet catch there. Always had an issue. Well, I wanted to take this for a wash to see what it would clean up like, but if the windows don't go up, then I can't really. Why can I not open the boot? Do you do that? Just wanted to have a nosy really and see what was in there. Right. Is there no way in apart from that? That doesn't open. Oh, it's open already. We've got somebody's welcome mat for some reason. the best best room of the car this a very rusty jack which indicates water ingress doesn't it looks like something you found in the uh, titanic let's fire it up then see how bad it is i'm guessing just on the the state of it i'm guessing a misfire engine light on all that sort of 
horrendousness. Can you see me now? There we go. Right. Flashing up to say it's overdue a service. But no warning lights. Put my heated seat on, see if that works. Is there any point in trying the roof? I've got a feeling I'm going to be stuck in this with the roof down. No such luck. Oh, hang on. No. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Yeah, this definitely isn't coming back up, is it? I'm pretty sure it should go down further than that. It's like the world's worst spoiler. Will it go back up? Please come back up. Thank God for that. Don't want to be seen driving around my village in an old convertible Beetle. Spray my wrist on that. Right, what can I tell you about it? Oh, it works now. Right, so we've got temperamental windows. Right, they're working, how weird is that? Come on, you. Hmm, and it's not working again. <sighs> I left my finger, right. Oh, bugger. Ah, right, right, now we're, now we're talking. Let me adjust this camera. The cheapest, noisiest handbrake ever. Sounds quite sweet though. I think once we've taken this for a quick drive, now all the windows are up, we could jet wash it and see what it comes up like. I think that's what we'll do. I don't really want to put the seatbelt on because I've got a feeling it'll be very mouldy. Huh, it's not too bad actually. Didn't end up getting mould stains on my sweater. And I would say my heated seat works. See, it's not all bad, is it? Gives with one hand and takes with another. What was that? Crack spring we've got, either one or two, I'm not sure. <sighs> Lovely. Oh dear, it gets worse. <sighs> right. So, in no particular order, we've got faulty windows, faulty boot, faulty roof, crack springs, either one or two, Brake lines that need replacing. What was the other MOT advisory? Suspension bushes or something? There's quite a bit of history there, but I wouldn't describe it as full. Broken seatbelt latch. I fixed the gear gator. There we go. That was a simple job. I can now add qualified mechanic to my CV. But actually, joking apart, drives in a straight line, which is surprising. No warning lights on, we've got a quarter tank of fuel. The little blue coolant lights on, just to let us know that it's still cool. I had this once with a customer. She brought it back screaming, and I mean kicking and shouting and screaming and really having a whinge, because she bought a car. A couple of days later, she was going to a hairdressing appointment or something, and she got in it and started it, and the blue light was on. She said, I've got a light on here, it looks like a sailboat. Right, okay, I don't know what that means. I've had to cancel my hairdressing appointment because of you and blah, blah. Anyway, I took it down to my mechanics and got them to check it over because the light was off, which I thought was weird. Anyway, the next morning she came to pick it up and she said, the light's back on again. So I said, well, which light? Because there was no light on it when I looked. And the mechanic said, there's nothing wrong with it. She had that one there. And it was the blue coolant light, which just lets you know that the car engine is still cool. As soon as it reaches temp, it goes off. She was, to be fair, full of apologies, but this is the sort of stuff we have to deal with. Has it ever been smoked in? No? Got a clean cigarette lighter. 
ripped ripped passenger seat there under the paperwork. Hmm. Reminds me of that episode of Alan Partridge when they're talking about life insurance. Technically, Lynn, your life isn't worth insuring. Well, this Beatles life technically isn't worth saving. Which is a bit of a pity, I suppose, because it does drive okay, this. It's got four or five months MOT remaining, which means I'd have to put it through an MOT. So I'd MOT it, service it, and then fix all the issues. So I think before I know it, I'll be spending six or 700 pounds on this car, and it just really isn't worth doing. It's probably worth, if it was nicer, it's probably worth a couple of grand. So in an ideal world, I've given 700 pounds for it, I'd spend 200 pounds on it, and then hopefully make a thousand pounds profit. But this isn't the car. To spend seven or eight hundred pounds on this and then try and sell it for a profit just wouldn't be worth doing. So I think what I shall try and do is drop it at the local car wash, leave it for a mini valet, get them to try and clean the roof for me, spend 20 quid on that. Then I think I'll try and trade it as is. I'll let somebody take it cheap and then it's up to them then whether they want to fix it or not. Sometimes in this job you just gotta know when you beat and this is one of those occasions. We've got an annoying rattle coming from somewhere. The central locking button doesn't work either. We've got heated mirrors though. And they adjust. What's weird is that every time I find a fault with this car, suddenly then I find something that works. My gate is broken again. The gate that I just fixed. Ah, I've just noticed we're missing the vase. She's taken that with her, hasn't she? Yeah. I've never liked this era of Beetle. Everyone I've had, what was that? Every, I don't even know what that was. Everyone I've had has been like this. Just an abused thing that isn't worth saving. What was that noise? That was something dropped from space. Right, I'm getting out of this before it explodes. I'm gonna go and take it for a quick wash and then I'll see you when it's all clean. Well, that might be a bit of an over, over exaggeration. I'll see you when it's slightly cleaner. Get me out of this car. Oh, that is the sound of disappointment. Volkswagen, the people's car. No, thank you. It does sound sweet though. Nothing like a dignified entrance, is there? Oh, there we go. Right, guys. Well, a day has passed. I've just picked it up from the car wash. And it looks a bit better. Safety first. They charged me £20 to give it what they call a gold valet, which is one up from a mini. And it actually looks okay. The roof's still a bit of a mess, but it looks cleaner. They've managed to get rid of some of the moss from the window rubbers and window seals. The guys at the car wash even gave me a nice Love Heart air freshener. How thoughtful of them. It still smells quite musty, quite, quite damp. In fact, you know when you get on a boat, on like a speedboat or something, and you rip off the covers and you smell like sort of mildewy, it's that kind of smell. I think I've just lost my man of the people reputation with that comment, haven't I? But that's what it smells like like an old boat. Funnily enough, with the cracked springs, it drives like an old boat as well. Now what I've done is sent pictures of this car along with a very honest description to a mate of mine who does a bit of DIY and a bit of side trading. There's a bit of a side hustle. So he'll probably do most of the jobs himself just to keep the cost down. And I think, I'm convinced, it's still a 1800 pound car with a few jobs done. So there is some profit in it for him. Now with these kinds of cars that I buy in a batch that I don't really want, it's just a case of damage limitation. So, although I've spent £20 on it, so it owes me £720, I've sold it to him for £700. But I'm not really bothered, I'm quite pleased to see the back of it, move on to the next project. It just wouldn't be worth it for me to drop it off with my mechanic and spend hundreds of pounds fixing it. But for somebody who's prepared to do the work themselves, they might spend £300 in parts, so it might owe them £1,000, and then they'll definitely, without a doubt, get £1,500 for it. 
It's a pity we're heading into winter really because if we were in spring heading into summer this thing would sell immediately once fixed of course. Driving one of these is like being sat in a goldfish bowl. There's windows all around you. Those cracked springs don't half make a racket. So I think that's about it. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below. I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.